this out. Camera on. Okay. Es aho enai el he harim es aho enai el he harim me ayin yavo yavo es rihi me ayin yavo yavo es rihi me ayin yavo yavo es rihi Birth is a beginning, and death a destination. But life, life is a journey of going and growing from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowledge, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength, strength to weakness, often back again. From health to sickness, from loneliness to love, from offense to forgiveness, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion. And we pray from grief to understanding. From fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat. Until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made a journey. Birth is a beginning, and death a destination. Life, Edna's life, was a sacred pilgrimage. El Harachaman, sweet God, you've taken our beloved Edna from us. We grieve now in a darkened world, in her family, silence is lamentation, in their tears there is sorrow. Be with them, God, hear them. And let us today draw meaning from communities of shared purpose and meaning. In this time of grief, let us listen for the ever relevant message of your nearness, O oh God. We invite you, if you wish, to join with me in the recitation of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Ata imadi, thou art with me. That faith in the psalmist expressed is echoed today. I know in the feelings of Edna's dear family members. They're so grateful. Ta'imadi, that you are with them, that we are together, that we are safe. Even under these strange circumstances of gathering and social distance and masks, protecting ourselves from one another. Let us still draw close, as close as we can. And over the days and weeks to come, share memories of love. Memories of times when Edna's presence was a blessing. Although there will not be a formal Shiva gathering, family does invite you. If you wish to honor her life, to make a contribution, if you wish, to the Cleveland Site Center or to Anche Chesed Fairmount Temple. Dear friends, in our culture, there is the idea that inside of every person, is a private shrine of memory and love and that it's in that sanctuary that the loved ones who died before us now abide. We sense their presence, caress, they caress our spirits and are enfolded in our hearts. They talk to us, they tell us tales, they play games with us. And thus the pain of separation is soothed by memory. 
the hurt sustained healed by love, and we ourselves become purified through our sorrow. I share these words as a reminder of our purpose here today. We gather at Edna Stein's graveside, and our tradition bids us to look inside of ourselves, for there she is, standing tall as Edna could for the values that she cared about most, for integrity, for decency, for her strong beliefs about what life was for, and her determination to quench her own thirst for as full of a life as her body and spirit would allow. Today, when we remember her, we're remembering a precious, humane being, someone who set an example, especially over the recent years, of what it means to truly mourn a loved one, but continue to live with zest and joy. Today we remember Edna Stein, and if we so, if we make it so, she can be present to us and alive through us. Edna was born in mid-December of 1923. To give you a sense of perspective on how long ago that was, the president's name was Calvin Coolidge, and the cost of gas was 22 cents a gallon. So it's been a while. Edna is the oldest of two daughters, her and Judy, children of Daniel and Ida Vision, born and raised here in Cleveland. The father in this close-knit family worked in grocery stores, pushed a cart selling light bulbs, and ultimately worked in a factory. Edna and Judy got used to the challenges their family faced as they made several moves during a time of extraordinary economic hardship. Edna would fulfill her studies and make many friends at Glenville High School, almost all of whom she maintained throughout her life, surviving all of them. Judy shared with me yesterday powerful memories of having a sister that connected with her and protected her during their young life. Apparently, Edna expressed some regret recently to Judy about being too rough on her when they were kids. But the worst that Judy remembers is being jealous of the easier chores that Edna was able to claim in the Vision household. A special memory Judy shared is of Edna learning and then teaching tap dancing in the streets for money that she would use in her early teen years, not for her own sake, but to get her baby sister a doll that she wanted. After graduating at Glenville, Edna would need to go straight to work at the state supply company and then a variety of temporary jobs, one of which stuck for quite some time when she, Edna, worked at Anche Chesed, synagogue where I serve as rabbi for many years. Though her work tenure never overlapped, I know she had a strong work ethic, an eye for detail, administration, bookkeeping, record-keeping talents honed over many years in many different workplaces. And I told her family yesterday that there are still some administrative processes that our staff at Temple does because that is the way Edna taught them how to do it. When I run across her specific notes for how a particular synagogue member was being treated or supported at a given time, I recognize her handwriting immediately because it matches the thoughtful notes she'd exchanged with me in recent years at both difficult times in each of our lives. When my dad died in 2014, her beautiful and thoughtful note of consolation. Or when her dear husband Paul died in 2015. Or when happiness is, of course. Happiness is a rose in family such as hers. You should only know how deeply Edna would rejoice in being able to stay actively connected to those happinesses, especially when connected to the lives of her grandchildren. Jenny and her Josh, Amy and her Jonathan, Jeremy, his Kristen, Seth, Adam, Dina, or is it Deanna? Dina. And great-grandchildren, Nora, Avi, Tessa, Emily, Benjamin, Nicholas, and Alexa. Although surviving so many losses among family and friends were difficult on her, what buoyed Edna's spirits was the opportunity to connect with that bountiful harvest of Nachas that life had granted her. So many loving young people still tenderly involved in her day-to-day -day life. Boy, she loved seeing 
what your lives developed into over these recent years. When Edna looked back though on the early part of her life, she was glad to have gone to the wedding of a friend that Paul accidentally crashed. For so at that wedding began a momentous relationship that lasted nearly seven decades. Paul took a real shine to Edna at that wedding and set about going to make her his girlfriend, no matter how much chutzpah it took. Paul would come to Edna's home in advance of dates she had planned with other guys, just to let her know that none of them could bid higher than her, higher than him as a suitor for her affection. After Paul died, Edna told me that their marriage, beginning in the presence of Rabbi Rosenthal, walking along the Long Isle at Old Heights Temple, she was so delighted by the life they built of mutual encouragement and love, she was taken by his youth, his love of giving to others. She loved his humor most of the time and his entrepreneurial plans as an optician. When they were first married, they looked at the world through the third floor window of Edna's parents' home. And then they moved to South Euclid and made space for her mother, Ida, to come live with them where they became parents for the first time, to Jeffrey and then Keith, may he rest in peace, and then Susan. And finally, they spent many years in their Beachwood home, the site of a great deal of spoiling of grandchildren. They set an example in that home to everyone of what mutual encouragement and laughter looks like when it ripens with age. We grieve here today with Susan and her Fred, with Jeff, on, as a new status is cast upon them, now with neither of their parents left alive to gather insight, direction, and loving care. But they are so appreciative of the way Edna turned her devoted attention to them and to Keith when they were growing up, and maintained affectionate and loving ties with them as they matured and made families of their own. Jeff told me that throughout his life, going back even to grade school, his mom would dote on his activities attending every Little League game, basketball game at Beachwood High School. He remembers how one summer she and Paul welcomed him as a kind of summer intern at Cedar Taylor Optical, where Edna taught Jeff carefully how to manage the books, still a skill that he employs. He is thinking now of the mutual and inspired energy for making friends that both Paul and Edna had, including the week each summer Susan told me about at the Neville Hotel or how on a trip to Hawaii with several other families in his teenage years, Jeff remembers how the family connected and made friends with local broadcaster Virgil Dominic and sustained that friendship through many celebrations. Their home was a center for celebrations and gatherings. Edna was cooking wonderful foods, biscuits, casseroles, excuse me, I meant to say briskets and casseroles. There's some things that spell check just doesn't catch. <laughs> Susan said that even during the lockdown of Wiggins Place in recent months sheltering from the virus, she would bake in solidarity with and in honor of her mom and deliver the results to Edna whenever they would allow her to bring over some of that family sweetness. I also loved hearing from Susan about the Friday afternoon bowling matches that she remembered. When Edna would go bowling with friends and would stake a claim that it was the payday candy bar that she'd indulge with on those days. That was her best good luck charm. It seems to me in talking with Susan that the two of them had a special kinship being the only two women in a house full of testosterone. And this led to shared joy they took in their own activities, shopping together, traveling abroad to Italy, to Switzerland and elsewhere. Adam and Seth have shared with me that from as early as they can remember, They've had wonderful memories with their grandma to hold on to. In an email they sent me last night, they wrote, we loved going on vacation with our grandparents, including our trip to the Grand Canyon and annual Florida visits. In conversations with our grandma, we would also, we also like to remind each other of the time we came back from downtown on the rapid together and got absolutely soaked in the downpour as we ran to the car in the parking lot. They added their grandma also had a true talent for cooking and baking. Maybe she did make biscuits, I don't know. It's hard to choose a favorite, but she did have raspberry bars, 
white chocolate brownies, chocolate chip shortbread cookies. These were among her specialties. Her cooking set a high bar. The best compliment they say they give to their mom's cooking is when it smells like grandma's house. They remember when they were younger, loving to play school with their grandparents. The boys playing the teachers and their grandparents, the students. And grandma always came out at the top of that class, demonstrating her commitment to exceeding our high standards and learning for hours at a time. Having known Paul, I bet he went to detention several times. More recently, Grandma adopted a favorite phrase when they would leave visits with her. She would point to each of us, one at a time, saying to us, I love you, and you, and you. On a Zoom call we held yesterday afternoon, Jenny talked with a light in her eyes about the joy of the family sleepovers she'd have with Grandpa Paul and Grandma Edna. Her friends would come over and be jealous because Jenny and Amy's grandma had a kiln in her house and taught everyone how to do fine enameling work. The art projects they'd make with Edna's help were spectacular and they remain cherished, alongside memories of Shabbat dinners, game playing such as Scrabble, Boggle, Trouble, and words with friends. Apparently the fact that Edna didn't have a mechanism to sit still really works to the advantage of her grandchildren, who knew in their grandma a bowler, an enamel artist, a competitive game player, a golfer, a volunteer who'd translate books into Braille. And if that weren't enough, she knew that she could always make a pizza out of cookie dough and that that never fails with your grandkids. In May of 2019, when Jenny got married, well, she wrote to me about this, about how deeply happy she was to have Edna at the wedding. She wrote, she was at every event leading to the wedding. I was thoroughly impressed she made it to the very end of the wedding party. I remember walking up to her at the end and telling her that. Amy added that one of my most amazing memories is selecting her as the VIP, an important person to bring to school. She typed every student's name in that class in Braille and it made me po a popular student. Everyone impressed that she was such a memorable grandma among my classmates. Friends, in thinking about Edna's impactful life alongside ours, I'm reminded of the great teaching of the first century Rabbi Hilla, who famously asked three salient questions about life. The first is, im ein anili mili, this means, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? This, it seems to me, was actualized in how Edna managed the harsh winds that life did throw at her. She did so with honesty, and though not without complaint, she never sulked or fell into pieces. She found ways to withstand the wind's force. Hillel added, ma'ani," which means, if I am only for myself, what am I? And this reminds me of the essence of her restless energy, her desire to give thoughtfully to others. She had a strong de desire to do that, not just born of her maturity, but bred and taught to her in childhood, as a daughter, as a sister, as a patient and devoted spouse, a caring and engaged mother, and pretty much the hippest 96-year-old grandmother anybody's ever had. Finally, Hillel said, Im loach shav e matai, and this means, if not now, when? This is echoed in the way in which she died, not painfully, or with great awareness, just suddenly gone from our midst. The message her death sends to me is that there's no time like now to act on our principles, our goals and intentions, no time like now to express and share our love. We stand here in honor of Edna's life to lay her to a final rest. Yes, because it's our tradition, but not only that, we do so also to echo in the way in which she said goodbye in recent years to her grandsons. We come here to say to her and to Keith and to Paul what she'd be saying if she were here. We're here to say I love you and you and you. Amen. Yeah.
ישראל מלא רחמים, שוכן במרומים. אמצי מנוחה נכונה, תחת כנפי השכינה. אם קדושים או תורים כזוהר הרקיע מזכירים, את נשמת יתפן דניאל שהלכה לעולמה. על הרחמים יסתירהו בסתר כנפיו לעולמים. ויצרו בצור החיים את נשמתה, אדוני הוא נחלתה, ותנוח בשלום על משכבה, ונאמר אמן. God full of compassion, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your presence to Edna Stein. She has entered eternity. God of mercy, let her find refuge in the shadow of your wings. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God, you are her inheritance, and she is yours. She is a good inheritance. May she rest in peace. In a moment, we will conclude our memorial prayers, after which we invite you, if you wish, only if you wish, to succeed the family as they may wish in spreading a small amount of earth back in Edna's grave, assisting her with what the rabbis call the chesed shel met, the final kindness we can give to someone on earth. We offer now the words of the mourner's Kaddish praise. These are not easy words to say, even at a time when we are well and not sad. Ancient Aramaic words, words of mystery, they actually never mention death, but they have come to acknowledge our faith in life, even at moments as difficult as this. We say the words slowly with love for our tradition. We say, Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei rabba, be'alma divera chirute v'yamlich malchute, בחייכון ובימיכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו, אמן. 
יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולעלמי עלמיה, יתברך וישתבח ויתפואר ויתרמם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי דקודשה אריכו. לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרמיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. המקום ינחם אתכם. Toch Shar of Late Zion Virushalayim, may God comfort you, each of you, all of you, among the mourners of Zion and all our people. Amen. And those who may first participate in the midst of breaking earth upon the grave, you may do so, take a handful, and then if you wish to leave your glove by this chair, we'll take care of it. This concludes our funeral service. Thank you for being part of it.